journey with the Lady Lothiel. As my voice becomes your vehicle, my voice is anchored into your mind through many encounters with it over time. Today, I show you something rare, something beautiful, something magical, something near impossibly powerful. The first thing I want you to do is close your eyes. When they are comfortably closed, I want you to imagine right between your eyes a beautiful sapphire blue light. Very intense. Your eyes both turn inward to gaze upon it. And as they do so, you feel the familiar, comfortable, beautiful, tenuous tendrils of trance beginning to caress your mind. Just listen. That's all you need to do. Listen and follow. The experience will develop and you will enjoy it a lot. As you notice, that the sapphire light is no ordinary light. The more your eyes gaze into it, the less you think, your mind rapidly emptying of thought, and you can no more turn your eyes away from the light now than you could do something like Voluntarily stop breathing permanently. Your eyes locked to the light now. Thoughts draining. My voice filling up the empty spaces. Until it is all you hear. And the light is all you see. As your thoughts strain away, you go deeper into trance. As your thoughts strain away, you become more fixated on my voice. As your thoughts strain away, your eyes become more locked to the light. And only when you are mind is totally and completely empty, not a single thought remaining, will that light go out and your eyes release back to their normal position until there is not a single thought left in your head. Your eyes will not release, nor will that light go out. And when both happen simultaneously, it will feel so good that you will simply plummet into the deepest hypnotic trance possible for you. So continue to gaze as your mind becomes more and more empty. As you go deeper and deeper into hypnosis, my voice wrapping around your mind. No tricks, just sheer, pure pleasure. 
wrapping you up in it like a warm blanket as you go deeper and deeper now in your mind you stand now on the shores of a black water lake you can hear the water lapping against the shore the time is late evening the sun slowly dipping below the horizon. The cooling air caresses your skin as you walk toward the water, where an ornately carved boat is gently rocking in the wavelets that kiss the shoreline. There is no key that this boat is tied to. It rests there by some force unseen that holds it. You are drawn to it as the sun sinks still lower and a chill touches the air. You walk down to the boat, noting that there is an ornately woven blanket in there, inviting you to climb in and pull it over your knees. You do this, and the blanket radiates an almost unbelievable warmth that not only warms your knees, but the rest of your body as well. So comfortable do you feel as the warmth spreads. You hardly notice when the boat leaves the shore, still gently rocking in the waves. You now notice that there is also a pillow conveniently placed for you to lie against. So you put your head on it and know no more for the next few minutes. You are slowly awakened by a soft but insistent bumping sensation. You open your drowsy eyes to discover that you're actually bumping against the shore. In the shallows, the water is so clear that in the fading light, you can just about make out a gravelly bottom. So you step out of the boat, wetting your feet in the process, and climb up to the shore. The slope is gentle, so it's not a difficult climb. The moon is rising now and you can see it illuminate white stones that form a gravelly path for you to follow. Again, this path leads into a wooded copse, deciduous trees. It is late fall, so quite a few of the leaves have fallen allowing the moonlight to continuously illuminate the path before you, though remaining leaves dapple the path with shadows. A sense of anticipation, coupled with urgency, now grips you, and you quicken your steps as you come out of the wooded copse to see in the near distance, a large castle. It is from here that the sense of anticipation emanates. The adventure begins for real. What will you find inside? You quicken your steps, and the closer you get to the castle, 
the more the sense of urgency and anticipation grows within you. The closer you get to the castle, the deeper into trance you fall as well. You have now reached the drawbridge, a clear demarcation between the world you left and the world you are about to enter. The drawbridge is lowered and easy to walk across as it is quite broad. The portcullis is raised. It is though you are expected here. You enter a small receiving hall that opens out onto a broad two-tiered staircase, or at least you think it is two tiers. For the second you get to the second tier, you suddenly find yourself unable to move, as though your body would no longer obey you suddenly. And as this happens, the staircase segment you are on begins to move. You hear the stones that form the staircase grinding against each other, magical stones that will never wear each other away. It comes to a stop, and you see another tier of stairs ahead of you. Find yourself able to move once more, and quite startled, you start up this next tier of stairs, which curves off to the left. When you reach the next landing, you have two possibilities of where to go. One seems to lead back toward the door. The other seems to lead forward. You take the forward-facing one. You manage to get to the next landing, where the next one curves off to the right, and there is no second choice. As soon as you are halfway up this next tier of stairs, again you are held fast, while the stair changes with you aboard it. This time, when it comes to a halt, you notice it is stopped directly in front of a door. When you find yourself able to move once more, you climb to this landing, stand in front of the door, and notice that not only did it appear out of thin air while the staircase was moving, but it is of a most curious design. Where the castle's walls and doors are made of stone and wood, this door is very different. It seems to be made of a silvery metallic substance, cold to the touch. And as you lay your palm upon it, suddenly a depression appears that exactly fits it, and a musical tingling and jangling is heard from inside, as though some mechanism had been activated. The door swings inward, and you are quite shocked to note that it leads to yet another outdoor scene with another lake, this one of sheer and clear blue water, and you have somehow moved from late evening to broad daylight. You cross the threshold onto the grassy verge that leads down to the shore, finding there, almost as though you were expecting it, another boat, ornately carved, but this one gilded in silver so that it gleams in the sunshine. You climb aboard this new boat and note that instead of a heavy blanket, 
There is a light covering almost of cloth of gold in color. Another pillow. You cannot see any land in the distance. So you take the invitation to sleep away this journey as well. Again, you are awakened by a gentle but insistent bumping sensation. And note that you have come to shore yet again. There is an island in the center of this lake. A lake so vast the island could not be seen from the farther shore. Verdant grass leads up from the shoreline, which is an even gentler slope than the one that took you to the castle. You walk along a path where many have tread, and grass will not grow as a result. You note that there are rocky cliffs, and also things that look like round tunnels at ground level. It doesn't take you long to figure out that this must be part of the caldera of a giant volcano, although how it came to be inside of a room is anyone's guess. The round tunnels are lava tubes left behind by long dead eruptions. One of them looks more inviting than the rest, the entrance literally gleaming in the sunlight. That one is off to the far right and nearer than most of the others. As you walk toward it, you see an almost impossibility. The reason this tunnel gleams is its interior seems to be covered in mother of pearl, not placed there in flakes or blocks as would a human hand have done. No, it's as though some nacreous bearing mollus has literally left behind an offering by coating the entirety of the tunnel in the glistening substance. This makes this road a bit slippery. You will have to tread and or crawl carefully because the tunnel is different heights at different points in its existence. You walk forward and the tunnel narrows to the point where you must crawl on all fours. This continues for a time, and then you find it opens out again and you're able to stand. You look before you at the most wondrous sight in the universe, a cave whose walls, ceiling, floor, all seem to be made of pure gold. As you gaze around you, you hear a voice say, Come forward, I am waiting for you. And you do walk forward and see myself, Lady Lothiel, standing before an altar. The altar is to your right, and behind that altar, there is a gigantic image of a striking goddess, ample-bosomed, narrow-waisted, 
broad-hipped, with the curly wool hair of an African. This is the African side of my goddess you gaze upon, and as you do so, what appeared to be a statue opens its eyes and looks down at you. Would you serve me as my priestess serves me? If so, come forward and receive the offering that I give. You notice that the naked breasts of this goddess are beginning to drip and the fluid which drips from them glows with rainbows. Enticed beyond measure, you cup your hands and catch some of the liquid and taste it, finding that it is both your favorite flavor in the whole world and that it also goes straight to your mind and straight to your sex, binding both to the goddess in the space of half a heartbeat. It matters not if you be male or female. My lady accepts all who come in the name of love. You turn around to see what I'm doing noting that I am also naked. I represent the Scandinavian aspect of the Lady Freya. And as you look into my eyes, I grow and grow and grow until I am of equal height and girth with the golden goddess who stepped from the wall. Now taste my offering, and you see that my sex is dripping nectar, this one tinged with pure gold. Unable to stop yourself, you cup your hands and receive once more. Again, your favorite flavor, but intensify. And this time, the binding goes from sex to head, rather than the other way around, as these two goddess forms complement each other. Your head begins to spin as the enormity of the divinity you are in the presence of is fully revealed to you, and you drop even more deeply into trance, under the influence of the twin liquid offerings. Your body and mind bound and aroused, your body and mind enticed beyond measure, your body and mind in love with your goddesses, able and willing to serve and obey, needing and wanting to serve and obey. You pass out briefly from the sheer ecstasy. And when your woozy head regains some semblance of consciousness, you see two virginal-looking young girl attendants, one at your head and one at your feet. Both I and the semblance of the African goddess have vanished. We have come to lead you back, supplicant as you seem a bit unsteady on your feet. Back through the lava tunnel, chased with nacre, they lead you, and leave you at the tunnel entrance, 
we are bound to this temple and may not go further than here. We are sure you can find your path back to where you came from. Each step back toward the shore takes you even deeper into trance as your mind begins to process what you've just experienced. Into the gilded boat you get, foot your head upon the pillow, and out you go again. My, you are getting a lot of rest on this journey, and you'll be able to bring all of that back with you. Sooner than you thought possible, the boat is bumping against the shore of the large lake. You can see that in this world, it is starting to get late, and the sun is sinking. Back through the door you go, closing it behind you and watching the palm print disappear. You get onto the staircase and are held immobile as it retraces its journey. You get off on that landing, go down to the next tier, and watch it turn with you, again held immobile. And when it stops this time, you recognize the path back to the door. Through the door you go, over the drawbridge, and back to the original boat that brought you to the castle. Lie down in it. It is now bright daylight, and the sun is warm but the blanket this time will cool you. As you lose consciousness once more for the final time on this journey, Insistent pumping lets you know that you have reached the other shore, your final destination. And as I count upwards from zero to twenty, as you've gone a long, long way today, you will find energy that you collected along the journey. Each time you slept within a boat, suffusing you. Energy from the water the boat crossed, entering and filling you. So that no matter what time of day it is, when you awake, you will have enough energy to do what you need. If it's near your bedtime, there will be just enough for you to make the house safe, do what you need to before going to bed, and then crawling into bed and sleeping deeply the whole night through. If you are listening to this in the daytime, you will have enough energy to take you through your day in a joyful and cheerful manner. As always with me, zero is deep hypnotic sleep, and we begin the ascent to full waking consciousness with one, two, three, all unnecessary hypnotically induced relaxation now leaves your body and mind. Four, 
Five. One quarter awake. Six. Seven. Vaguely becoming aware of your true surroundings. Eight. Nine. Ten. Half awake. Eleven. Twelve. Becoming more and more aware of your real surroundings. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Three quarters awake. And if fifteen is three quarters awake, going up. If I were to go backwards, you would go back towards sleep. Fourteen. Thirteen, twelve, eleven, ten, half asleep again, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, really aware of where you are now. Ready to give a big, deep breath and stretch with sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nearly there now, nineteen, big stretch, deep breath, nineteen and twenty, eyes open, wide awake, and feeling wonderful. <laughs>